Hello everyone and welcome to online learning platform of Delhi Public School Surat. Today the topic of discussion is silk which is a part of chapter 3 fiber to fabric of class 7. So let us go ahead. First of all let us understand what is silk. Silk is a natural fiber. Actually all the fibers which are obtained either from plants or animals are considered to be natural fibers. As silk is obtained from an insect called silk moth, it is considered to be a natural fiber of animal origin. The protein present in silk is fibroin protein. This fibroin protein is so strong that if you compare it with a steel wire of same thickness, then it is even stronger than steel. The rearing of silkworms for obtaining silk is called sericulture. Now, let us talk about how silk fiber was discovered. The exact time of discovery of silk is not known. But according to a Chinese tale, there was one empress named Si Lung Chi. One day, she was having a hot cup of tea in her garden under the mulberry tree. Accidentally, a cocoon fell into her hot cup of tea and the delicate threads of that cocoon started opening up. She picked up the cocoon and she took the silk threads and started wrapping it around her fingers. She observed that when the silk fibers were over, what was left behind was a small larva. She realized that larva was actually the source of the silk fibers. Because of the lustrous appearance of these fibers, she thought of using these fibers for making fabrics. Thus, began the silk industry in China. And it was kept as a closely guarded secret for hundreds of years. Later on, traders and travelers introduced silk to other countries. The route they traveled is still called the Silk Route. Characteristics of silk. Silk is very soft, lustrous and elastic. It is biodegradable in nature as it is of animal origin. It keeps us warm during winter and cool during summer. Thus, it is all-time favorite. It drapes very well and looks very beautiful on wearing it. It is strong and thus durable. If we talk about types of silk, then a lot of variety of silk is available in the market because of different species of silk moth which gives different varieties of silk. Few examples of silk are mulberry silk, tussar silk, airy silk, muga silk, etc. Out of all this, the most common and the most popular is mulberry silk. So, let us talk more about the mulberry silk. Mulberry silk is obtained from the silk moth called mulberry silk moth, scientifically known as Bombyx mori. Now the question arises, why is it called mulberry silk moth? The answer is, this particular silk moth will eat only mulberry leaves and nothing else. So that's why it has been named as mulberry silk moth. Scientific name of mulberry tree is Morus alba. Now, let us talk about the life cycle of silk moth. If we talk about the life cycle of silk moth, it can be divided into four stages for our understanding. The first stage is when they lay the eggs. The second stage is larva stage. The third stage is pupa stage and the fourth is adult stage. First of all, the female silk moth lays 300 to 400 eggs at a time. The female dies almost immediately after depositing the eggs. The eggs will be hatching in about 10 days time and the larva comes out of it. This larva is also called caterpillar or silk worm. The larva which emerges out of the eggs will be feeding on large quantities of mulberry leaves for about 3 to 4 weeks. 
the larva will be eating voraciously and grows very fast during this stage they shed their skin four times and this shedding of the skin four times is called molting as you can see over here you can see the four molts of larva after 4 to 6 weeks when the larva has achieved its maximum growth it stops eating and enters the next stage called pupa stage when it enters the pupa stage it first weaves a net to hold itself then it will start swinging its head from side to side in the form of the figure of 8 during this movements of the head the caterpillar secretes a fiber from the special glands present in the silkworm head these fibers are made up of protein that is the fibroin protein this fibroin protein will harden on exposure to the air and becomes the silk fiber soon the caterpillar completely covers itself by the silk fiber and turns into pupa this covering is known as cocoon as you can see over here you can see there is a caterpillar which is developing inside the cocoon and this stage is known as pupa stage now after that the silk moth will enter into its last stage of life that is the adult stage when the pupa develops completely and fully to form an adult silk moth then the silk moth which is inside the cocoon will be secreting lytic enzymes this lytic enzyme will break the cocoon and the beautiful silk moth will come out of the cocoon the adult female silk moth will again lay hundreds of eggs in this way the life history of silk moth is completed now let us talk about how we are using the silk moths for obtaining the silk for commercial purpose which is called sericulture so in sericulture the production of silk involves different steps the first step is rearing eggs of the silk moths are stored on the strips of cloth or paper and it is sold to the silk worm farmers the farmers will be rearing the eggs in very hygienic condition at suitable temperature and humidity this will lead to the hatching of the eggs and the larva comes out the larva will be feeding on the fresh mulberry leaves for around 25 to 30 days during this time the larva are kept in clean bamboo trees along with freshly chopped mulberry leaves after 25 to 30 days the caterpillars stop eating and move to a tiny chamber of bamboo in the tray to spin the cocoons small rags or twigs may be provided in the trays to which the cocoons can get attached the caterpillar or the silk worm spins the cocoon inside which the silk moth will develop Now the next step is processing of the cocoons to obtain the silk fiber. Once the silk moth has made the cocoon and it has hardened on exposure to the air, this cocoons are collected and then they are either placed in hot water or it is exposed to steam or kept under the sun. The heat in all this situation will kill the moth inside and makes the silk fibers of the cocoons to separate out the process of taking out the threads from the cocoon for use as silk is called reeling of silk as you can see in the first picture over here a woman is boiling the cocoons in the hot water boiling the cocoons in the hot water is the most commonly used method for killing the silk moth inside and for and to take out the silk fibers after that reeling is done Now the last step in silk production is converting the silk fibers into silk cloth. Silk fibers are spun to form silk threads called silk yarn. Then the silk yarn is woven on the looms into silk cloth by the weavers. This picture summarizes the entire process of sericulture. 
Let us look at it in brief. First of all, the healthy female silk moth will be laying hundreds of eggs. This eggs will be hatching and the larva comes out of it which will feed on the mulberry leaves for around 20 to 35 days. After that, when it has achieved its maximum growth, it starts spinning its cocoon and the spinning of the cocoon will take around 3 to 7 days. Then it is kept in the boiling water which will kill the pupa inside and it will even loosen out the filaments. Then reeling is done and at the end we obtain the silk fiber and the silk fabric. If we talk about world silk production then China is leading the world in silk production while second position is held by India. Nowadays artificial silk is also available in the market and it is very difficult to differentiate between real silk and artificial silk. One method of differentiating is a burning test. We have to burn the fibers taken from real silk as well as artificial silk and when we smell it then real silk smells like burning hair while artificial silk smells like burning plastic. Now let's talk about some of the health hazards of sericulture industry. First of all the workers which work in this industry have to dip their hands frequently in boiling water in order to kill the silk moth and for the reeling purpose. This leads to burning of the skin, blisters and a lot of open wounds. This makes them prone to skin infections and diseases. Another thing is they have to stand for long hours and they have to focus while reeling the very fine silk fibers. This leads to backache, spine disease as well as eye disorders. The machines which they are using for spinning and winding produces a lot of noise which can lead to hearing problems. So these are the hazards related to their occupation termed as occupational hazards of sericulture industry. Thank you and have a nice day.